You'll be creating your food truck from this template provided from Studio Fluid. Keep in mind, we'll need to see your truck name, vector graphics, social media and website handles, as well as the incorporation of text, color, and graphics. In order to see your template and unlock all of your parts of the food truck, make sure your layers panel is open and just toggle this lock button to be able to edit. When you're done, your final image should look like this. So drag both templates to the center and of course add your labels, including your name at the very bottom. Go ahead and open up your template. I've singled out the two views that I want. I've also opened up my windows like types, swatches, layers, and character. I'm going to put the logo here as well as on the front and then add some extra vectors, color, and some pattern. Food trucks are an awesome alternative to brick and mortar stores to allow entrepreneurs a chance to make some money without spending a lot or having a lot of overhead. It allows them to travel, and get their name out there, and also pursue their passions. We see a lot of trucks that aren't just food, they're clothing, wellness, etc. The goal of this assignment is to mess around with typography and vector and to have a clear representation of your design. Windows you'll be using include the character panel as well as the swatches. This is a continuation from last assignment in which you created swatches from hues. For this assignment, you're also going to use your layers panel specifically because we are using a provided template from Studio Fluid. They've created this template and you'll work on top of it. To access any of it, just go ahead and toggle the lock button or the visible button to see what you're doing. When working in the layers panel, go ahead and make a new layer called your artwork that you can work right on top of. This is better than working inside the layer in case you need to preview your template or make changes. So in deciding what kind of food truck I wanted, I wanted to solve a problem that we have and one of its, you know, a work-life balance. So I decided to create a food truck that appeals to people on their break or after work. That's a spot for people to to get a massage or rest or, or maybe a therapy space or something like that. So I'm deciding to call my food truck Chill. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out my word mark and go to your tools panel up above and activate your type tool. And I'm gonna mess around with all caps as well as lower caps. And I find that I like the all caps better so I'm going to erase that. Now, an easier way to do that is go to type, change case, uppercase, lowercase, title case, or sentence case, allows you to make quick changes to what you're doing. When you're designing, it's better to work in lowercase and then have it change it for you. So you'll see in the type tool, there's many, many options to mess with that we'll talk about later. In the character panel, this allows you to mess around with type attributes. With the type selected, if I want to change the typeface, because who wants to work with Myriad Pro? You don't want to work with the default typeface. You want to change it up. Uh, the typeface I used is from Adobe Fonts, so you can find it. It's with your subscription. Uh, you can go to Adobe Fonts and activate it, or you can actually activate it in the software where you select your typeface of choice. In practicing for this tutorial, I went ahead and pre-selected my typeface. Keep that in mind because it does take some time. You wanna be able to get the kind of vibe, feeling uh, through your type choice. It's a lot of trial and error, but for me, I've selected Nova Heavy, and I decided to go with all caps for my word mark. Chill is going to be the name of my truck here. And I might include a little tagline as well, just to give a little more insight into the company. 
In the character panel here, you can customize the spacing between letters and rows of type, as well as sizes and so forth. One thing you might want to adjust is your, what we call letting or the space between two lines of type. That can be changed here using the little arrow keys. You want to do this as opposed to creating two different text boxes because it's harder to work with and harder to manage, especially if you decide to edit your typeface in the future. The term letting, as well as other terms, actually came from the history of printmaking. So letting refers to the space between lines of type because they actually put little bits of lead to separate their characters. Another edit you might want to work with is tracking. So changing the space between all the letters in a group. Kerning refers to changing the spacing between two characters. It's easy to get those confused, but just keep in mind they are different. So I'm going to add some tracking or some space between my letters here just to match the tone of my truck. Remember, the design of the typeface as well as the space around the typeface can say a lot and back up some of your message or the tone of your company. Things that you really shouldn't do is stretch type like this. Um, it loses its characteristics and it's just really a no-no in the design field. You want to try to preserve as much of the typeface as possible. And to scale text, while clicking and dragging, hold shift and you'll maintain the aspect ratio or the proportion of the typeface as it was designed. But now if you want to say warp the type, you can go into the envelope tool here and click and you can mess around with like arcs or or changes to the typeface that still looks good, but it adds a little bit of energy and character to your logo. So this is bulge and shell, but what I'm gonna do is utilize the rise tool. I love a nice slanted typeface that rises. And so I'm messing around with the bend settings here. If I do too much, I create kind of awkward spaces. So I wanna mitigate that as much as possible. That's looking better. So you'll see I can mess around even with the distortion. So if I wanted like one of the letters to be bigger than the other, I'd do that, but I'm gonna keep those to zero and then just mess around with the bend settings here. You're more than welcome to use any of these warp settings. Just keep in mind that your typeface should still be legible and go with the tone and theme of your truck. As you can see, I mess around with Maybe it, it falling as opposed to rising, but I'm a fan of the positive energy of a text rising and the history of kind of sign painting. So I'll hit okay. Now you see this filter still applied. So I'm gonna to go to object, expand, and now I've got a pure shaped instead of that filter there. That's just a great way to get it back to shapes and away from being a typeface. Whenever I'm designing, if I make a change to the typeface or if I'm exploring, I have at least 10 to 20 versions of the typeface because I never know which one I like. And I want to make sure I just mess around until I get the right kind. So if you make a change to your typeface, copy it, paste it again. And then if you want to add something new to it, work in the new one. That way you can always go back. So you'll see here I have got three uh, a lot of my files all end up having like 20, 30. A famous designer said, pixels are free. That's from Draplin, great designer. And he's right, pixels are free. Utilize the negative space of the artboard and that's where you can work and edit and get some custom type. So as you can see here, I'm working with stroke and fills to create dimension to my typeface if I wanted to. So I like what's happening here, especially right there, but I'm not a fan of the C here. So I'm gonna continue editing, moving it around. And 
you'll notice that the final product doesn't even have any of this, but you need to have this sense of play when you're working. Some things are going to work out, some things won't. That's what the command C tool is for, and as well as the command Z. I'm usually not a fan of stroke typeface or strokes in general, uh, but I actually really like it here. Um, so I'm going to continue messing around with it just to give it a little bit more personality. So with all that play, I actually decide to go back to one of my more original type arrangements here. Um, just this didn't really work and for the sake of time, I'm, I'm loving this one. That's why, like I said before, you keep all of your iterations in case you go down the rabbit hole and you realize, wow, the first thing I did was probably my favorite. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's, it's, it's a fun game to play. So with this done, now I'm considering adding a tagline at the bottom just to give a little bit more insight into the company. It can communicate your culture, your tone of the company, or some of the goods or services you provide. In order to do that, uh, I'm going to actually use a different tool. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool. Because I want my tagline to flow with the header here, I'm going to work with the baseline and create my tagline underneath. We're working with a path created by the pen tool and then adjusted by the direct selection tool. Once you're happy with the path, go ahead and make sure it's a stroke and then navigate to type tool and instead go down until you see type on a path tool. Click the path and there you go. Now you have type that will go on any path you've created. Remember a path is created by two points from the pen tool. So here I'm messing around with my tagline, trying to figure out what I want. I kind of did a lot of this on the fly. So you'll see some of my planning stage. I recommend writing this out in, in on a sheet of paper, planning out as much as you can in your sketchbook before going into the illustrator space. So I settle on this tagline temporary headspace. I think that's a great little tagline for the company, very millennial. Uh, yeah, very great vibes all around. So then I want to make sure to edit my type on path options for things to fit right. So I can go in the settings here in my type on a path options from the type window and it allowed me to change how the, the type is presented. I continue to mess around with the path, just trying to get that type to line up where I want it to. You can go in and actually move the type around. You'll see by using the direct selection tool here with the type activated, I can push it to where I'd like. But then I realized this is the same typeface as chill and it's better to have two typefaces going on uh, it shows range, shows sophistication. So here I'm, I'm actually doing some looking in just what I have on my computer. Now traditional designers spend a lot of time trying to figure out the right typography based on their education and understanding of the look and feel and communicating the intent of the company. Now we don't have a lot of time, so especially with a tagline, you don't want to overdo it in terms of decoration, I'm looking for still a sans serif typeface that isn't condensed, meaning the type isn't too close together. I want something that is just going to complement my chill typeface and also read quite well. You have access to a lot of typefaces from Adobe that you can download from Adobe Fonts. I highly recommend doing so. They have a truly amazing stock of beautifully rendered typefaces. I would do this as opposed to say a default because that is just kind of a garbage pail of typefaces designed by everyone where Adobe font has specifically curated typefaces designed by type engineers. So as you can see here, I settle on a typeface that's sans serif as well, but it's thinner in stroke 
and it complements it really well. It has nice contrast, doesn't look the same, but has the same feeling. So then I'm messing around with the tagline again. And once I'm happy, I make sure things are centered and I'm, I'm pretty excited to move forward. So once you're done editing, I highly recommend duplicating it one more time and keeping the other one live, especially if you've applied strokes and type. This way you can make any ed edits later, but this one I've go gone ahead and expanded it and I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my truck. Making sure I'm in my artwork layer, I'm going to copy and paste it and place it right in the center of my truck here. To make sure it's aligned, I make a quick rectangle and then I align the two, the logo and the rectangle together. And I'll use the center align tool just to make sure it is in the center. Now, sometimes optically, you need to make adjustments depending on the look of your logo. So keep that in mind, the align isn't always the default to go to. Now I want to add chill to my front, but it's kind of a very small space. So wishing I had saved <laughs> my typeface when I originally typed it out, uh, cause I just want to lay it out kind of more traditionally. So I go back to my work tool and I'm going to go ahead and expand it, maybe use it as a stroke and apply this simple treatment to the front of my truck as opposed to it being the one on the side. So there we go. I have just the basic one. I'll probably just keep it at chill, hoping that my brand will be recognized. Maybe it's on the same level as Starbucks. Remember when Starbucks used to have Starbucks in their logo, but then they removed everything until you just saw the symbol. So hoping for, hoping for that same brand recognizability at this point in the design process. <laughs> so with that done, I'm going to go ahead and add some secondary type, including the website, uh, some features that you haven't seen yet in the type tool. You can also manually mess around with the kerning or the tracking. Uh, if you want to kern two letters, you can go into touch type tool and you can just physically move one type around. And this is a pretty neat way to get some cool custom typeface here. Uh, but again, if you're, if you're a little worried about customization, just use the character panel. So zooming in, I want to add stuff to this door. Uh, traditionally, I see a lot of trucks have their social media handles or their websites right on the door there, which I think is a great idea. You can add symbols if you need to. If you're really into, you know, adding the social media icons, you can. But I'm a big believer that we're at a stage in society where we recognize that the at symbol means social media and it could hopefully be both for Twitter and Instagram. So I'm just going to type in at chill space. That way it's nice and clean. I don't like to see a lot of the Instagram logos or the Twitter logos. They tend to cloud up the space and... I'd rather have it be my brand. So again, just keeping it to at chill space there. And now I'm going to go ahead and work on coloring the truck. So I don't want it to look yellow. I want to create a custom color palette. So just like the first tutorial, I'm going to make my color palette out of these squares here. Then I'll move it into my swatches panel so that I'll always have the same color for consistency. So I'm going to navigate over to Adobe Color, which I mentioned before, just so you can see the cool interface and how you can get inspiration from color palettes and make quick color changes. So going to color.adobe.com, you can see that you've got this great plethora of colors. You can explore other color palettes here so you can see what's going on at the time. It was these glowy colors. Uh, and then you can look into trends. So 
trends are very helpful. But remember, trends don't last and they always change. So don't always just stick with something that's trendy. Try to stick with something that's more relatable to your company. So I'm going to navigate back to the Create. And I want to create a color palette that has a lot of calming blues and maybe some bright oranges just to give it some personality. If you're struggling with color relationships, I highly recommend the color harmony rules to the left. We have our monochromatic, which is the least favored in my opinion. I recommend analogous or triad or complementary to increase contrast and create exciting color palettes. So with that though, I'm gonna go ahead and start and create some of my hues that I had in mind. So I'm gonna start with kind of a, a pale mint green and adjust from there. It's important that you have contrast and different values in your color palette. You don't wanna have similar values, similar saturations, similar hues throughout. Otherwise it gets kind of bland and it's a bit safe in my opinion. So I'm going to go through and you notice I went right for like this bright yellow orange and then I'm going to try to find some midnight blues as well to kind of create that calming sense, that midnight feel. Um, our mind is relaxing, but it's also some positive energy with some of the color choices. So these are the colors I picked before. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them and create my new swatches panel by clicking and going to new color group. And then I'm gonna label it for future use too. It's so important to save your colors, especially when you're building a brand. These are gonna be the colors that the brand would use for everything, business cards, all the way up to their website. So keep that in mind. So now I can go ahead and start coloring the elements of the truck. Make sure that in the layers panel that your truck is unlocked and you can also add shapes too. You don't have to just work with the shapes being created. So with my front here, I paint the whole thing, this great mint green, but then I wanna add secondary colors to create contrast and to make it visually appealing to the consumer. So I'm using the shape tool to add a rectangle to the bottom and I'm gonna color it maybe a, a darker color to increase contrast and incorporate some of those colors I picked. I also want that color to wrap around to the front. I'm messing around with maybe different colors here. Remember your color palette can change as you work. You might find you need more neutral colors or less neutral colors, up to you. But again, make sure you have contrast. I want to wrap that blue around the front, but not on the major part of the grill area, just on the side here. So I'm just going to add some extra rectangles, make sure I'm in the right layer and color that so that we have consistency and the trucks really starting to come together here. Keep track of the arrangement, make sure certain items are behind. So these two shapes need to go behind that bumper, so I'm gonna move them back into the layers panel, like so, and I've got my color scheme so far. So now I wanna make this truck pop, and I wanna give it some personality, so I grabbed some of these icons that I found from the Noun Project that you can use, uh, especially for academic purposes. Uh, they're here, they're already colored to the colors that I've picked, but I'll show you how I did that anyways. So with all of them selected, you can go up to the recolor tool right here. Now in the new Illustrator update, this looks slightly different. Just go to advanced settings. And so what you can do is rearrange the colors if you need. This just allows for you to color them quickly with the color palette you have. Now you can always just ungroup the items and just recolor them by hand as well. But again, this is quicker and I could just move my colors around too, especially if I just want them all to be the same color, which I'm kind of liking here. 
Now I want to create a custom pattern with these three icons. So I'm going to click them all and drag them into the swatches. By double clicking the little swatch, you get a preview of what the pattern is going to look like. You notice that the spacing here is awkward. So I'm going to actually fix the little window that they sit in so that the pattern looks natural and the spacing is even. So I'm actually going to go ahead into the pattern options and adjust the width of the shape they're in. And you notice how the spacing is looking more and more balanced. And then here we go, it's getting pretty consistent. So then it automatically applies the pattern to anything selected. So go ahead and make a rectangle. And there you go, you see there is a pattern. Now, obviously the scale is a little bit off here. So I'm gonna go into the pattern and adjust it. You can adjust it in the pattern objects, but having done this before, I like just scaling the shapes down and comparing them with where they need to be placed. So I scale them down and then I put them on the truck just so I can see if I like the scale. Once I'm happy, then I'll recreate that pattern again. Having seen how the colors interact behind the word mark, I'm gonna go in and adjust the colors in my recoloring tool one more time. So I make them all the same color and then I'll make my pattern. Again, I'll do some adjustments, double click and rearrange my shape. I remembered the coordinates from before. So you can also change the way the imagery is tiled. So I did brick by row just so there's variety here as opposed to them being completely stacked. But there's grid, there's brick by column, hex by column, and so forth. So I like the brick by row. I think that works out really well. So then I'll click out of it. I'll make that shape one more time and see if I need to adjust it. There we go. So there's my pattern. Of course, I'm gonna nestle it behind my logo and make adjustments. I've sped up this part of the tutorial because I just mess around a little bit more with trying to get clarity and contrast between the background elements and the foreground elements. Right now, chill is disappearing because of the amount of icons there. So I go ahead and I recolor the icons first, and then I go ahead and mess around with some of the transparency, as you'll see here. So I go ahead, I recolor the artwork, see how white acts. That's looking better, but it's still not quite there. So then I might, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and change the way the icons look so they're nice and transparent. And then I'm gonna bring in some popping white to the chill logo. I'm usually not a fan of stroke, but I think I need it for this look. So now I'm going and adding some more elements to the truck using some of those icons around just to create some harmony. So pulling in those shapes from before, I like the cloud underneath this tagline here, actually above it. And I think the bottom also needs a pattern as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and arrange some of those details. I'm gonna use this cloud as well to create another pattern just so you can see it again. So I'm scaling it down to the size I need and I'm gonna recolor it so it's not as colorful as before so it's less distracting. Once I have that, I even adjusted the stroke, and then I'm gonna go ahead and create a pattern from it. So by bringing it into my swatch pattern, I'm already creating a swatch from it, and then I could just adjust the spacing around it by making the box it's nestled in it's bigger. And there we go. And I'm gonna make it varied again and I'll click double click to get out of it and then of course make my shape 
yeah, that swatch looks great. I'm just going to reduce the contrast of the black, even though it's kind of neat here, but I'll mess around with the opacity at the top. There we go. It looks nice. Uh, it almost looks photographic because it's not too digitized there with the transparency. And then I'll go ahead and adjust color, try to get some more uniformity to the truck. Then I want to add some details. I removed the glasses. I didn't want to look like an optometrist. Uh, I'll bring in the tagline right here. Keep it simple. You don't have to overcomplicate the design. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm pretty happy with it. So now I'm removing all the elements. Uh, you could decide maybe save this and import it into a new document, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to remove all the elements. I can copy and paste those onto outside the layer, move them outside the layer. Then I'm gonna add my small black bar. Don't make it too big here. Obviously it's still got the pattern. So I'm just gonna assign it, make it black and remove the stroke from it. And then I'm gonna put my name. You can even decide to color it if you want. So I'm sampling the color from my swatches panel here. And of course, making sure it's not a stroke, it's a fill. And then you can add your name and your title. Make sure your name and title aren't too big. They're just there to label it. They're not there to demand your attention. Just so let it be very subtle at the bottom, not too big. Remember, it's all about the design. This is just so you can name it. It's like signing a painting. You don't want your signature to be so big. Otherwise, it becomes part of the painting. And there you go. A nice, clean presentation. You're going to submit the native file, the AI file, as well as a JPEG for presentation. To save your native file, go to File, Save As, just so you can rename it, and put in your first name, last name, and the label, and make sure AI is selected. Hit save, keep it in Illustrator the year that you are submitting it. And then you're going to export for your JPEG, export as, 